But today I want to talk about fear. I want to talk a little bit about fear. I think it's important for us, especially considering how this year has unfolded. It's only March. Not even the end. We're about smack dab almost in the middle. And 2020 has been difficult and trying to say the least. Uh, perhaps for some of you on a personal level, but think of us as a, as a nation and as a, as a globe, as the world. We're only 73 days in to 2020, about three months into 2020. And already we've talked about going to war. We've seen wild fires uh, burn up uh, uh, in Australia. We've lost a, a world-renowned and loved athlete. We've seen uh, the stock market fluctuate and drop to significant lows. We've seen a, a pandemic outbreak. People everywhere are fearful, and we've seen them act on it. They're stocking up on toilet paper, <laughs> on hand sanitizer. They're fighting in the grocery store for toilet paper. The airports are empty, airplanes are empty, travel is, is banned or, or restricted. Uh, seating arrangements uh, uh, of, of a specific number are restricted and banned. Broadway is shut down. People are concerned about their health and their safety and it is only March. So if we think about this, people perhaps have a reason to be afraid, a reason to be fearful because December 31st, 2019, everyone, 2020 is my year, let's go. 2020 is my year. And yet we see 2020 taking this, this course and unfolding this way. No one could have predicted this. I want to speak today about fear. I'll be coming today from the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 7. Specifically focusing on the final verse, verse 7. When you have it, say amen. <laughs> I was real quick. Somebody knew exactly where I was at. You can turn with me in your Bibles. You could scroll with me on your phones. Uh, what a blessing to me in the house of God. For those of you that are here, I thank you for pressing your way. For those of you that are watching, I thank you for uh, pressing your way and watching as well. And being involved in what's going on, on here and being connected uh, it's a beautiful thing, this technology that we have, that even though we can't be here, we could still be here and connect with what God is doing, how God is moving uh, from across the screen. So thank you for taking the time out to support the ministry in this way and be fed in this way. Amen? Amen. All right, let's read. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 7. I thank God, this is Paul writing, I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors with a clear conscience. As I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. And I have reminded and I am reminded of your sincere faith that first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I am reminding you to fan into the flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has given us not the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind or self-control. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you so much for this time. I thank you for this service. I thank you for the ability to glean from your word, to hear from your word, to encourage your people in these times and encourage uh, those who are listening, Father. I pray, Lord, that as I speak, you would be seen, you would be heard, you would be felt, you would encourage, you would minister to your people and do what only you can do. I thank you. I praise you. I give you glory. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. As the video stated, the most commonly used uh, common command in scripture is fear not. Fear not. It's listed uh, 365 times in the Bible. That's one fear not for each day. On a year like this, a leap year, you might want to go back and read another one for the extra, extra day. Uh, but it's 365 times in the Bible. And I believe the reason why this command is so prevalent is because the Lord knows as human beings what our propensity is to lean towards fear. 
to run towards fear, to be afraid. He knows when we struggle with things that he's called us to do that seem bigger than ourselves. Amen. He knows because he's called us to do things that seem impossible because we'll need him to get those things done. So we're afraid because the thing that God has called us to is huge, it's massive, it's bigger than us. So the Lord prefaces it with fear not. This is what I've called you to. Fear not, Mary. This is what I've called you to. Fear not, Moses. This is what I've called you to. Fear not, insert your name here. This is what I've called you to. The Lord knows that the, 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 the things that he's called us to is huge, but he also knows that the world is not the kindest place for us to live in. He also knows that the world is filled with snares, filled with things to trap us, things filled with things to keep us fearful. And as a result of that, he has to command us, to remind us to stay focused and to fear not. Amen. To fear not, to fear not. He gives us this charge, fear not. So what is fear? What is fear? Dictionary defines fear as a distressing emotion aroused by impending danger evil or pain etc whether the threat is real or imagined the feeling or the condition of being afraid anticipation of the possibility that something unpleasant will occur anticipation of the, the possibility that something unpleasant will occur fear is something that stops us in our tracks sometimes Fear is something that, that uh, 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 keeps us from moving forward sometimes. Fear is something that sometimes we live with day after day after day after day. But God does not call us to live in fear even when we are afraid. Amen. Even when we are afraid and things rise up that cause us to be afraid, God calls us to courage and, have, and be strong and courageous and run through it anyway. Um. Being courageous doesn't mean that fear is not present. It means that you choose not to stay, dwell, and live in the fear that is present. Yeah, yeah. And so what we see here is fear is something that distresses us and, and, and causes us to sometimes lock up. Let's just listen to some of the terms that we have in our everyday language to describe what fear does to us. Some of these may sound familiar. You may have used some of these. Uh, gripped by fear. Been paralyzed by fear. I'm afraid of my own shadow. It made my blood run cold. The hairs on my back, back, the back of my neck stood up. I jumped out of my skin. My heart skipped a beat. Amen. I was scared stiff. I was scared out of my wits. I like that last one. I was scared out of my wits. You can be so fearful it makes you lose your, your rational thinking process makes you lose your rational thinking process and all of these are ways to describe what fear can do to us Amen. the body whether we know it or not whether we like it or not whether we signed up for it or not the body has a physiological response to fear it's called the fight or flight response in recent times they've now added the fight uh, flight or freeze response your body has a response. The response is triggered by the release of hormones that prepare your body to either stay and deal with the threat or turn around and run away to safety. Amen. Or sometimes to just freeze like a deer in headlights. Regardless, that, that's what fear does to you. Your, your heart beats faster, your heart rate beats faster, or it declines, or your pupils begin to dilate, your muscles can tighten, you can begin to physically shake, your blood flow is increased, the hairs on your arm or your neck can stand up, and whether you know it or not, your body has a built-in system on how it responds when you're afraid, Amen. how it responds to fear. And this system is not bad. In fact, it's how we were wired to help us survive. Amen. To help us survive. But it is still a system that exists. And I think as believers, as Christians in these last days, as Christians in this day and age, as Christians in 2020 with everything that's been taking place, we need to know what our response to fear should be. We don't close our eyes to fear. We don't say, oh, it doesn't exist. It's not real. No, no, no. It's a real thing. It's a real feeling. So what do we do about it? There's one more thing I'd like to add to that list. We said fight. We said flight. We said freeze. And I'd like to add faith. Faith. 
to that list. As the believer, we must be grounded, we must be rooted, we must be anchored in faith. Anchored in faith. Paul is writing to his protege, his, his mentor, Timothy. And he says, you know, he says, you've been, uh, you come from a, a great family line. I'm, I'm serving and I remember your tears. I remember <clears throat> being with you. I long to see you because then I'll be filled with joy. I'm reminded of your sincere faith that first dwelt in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and now I'm sure dwells in you. He says, Timothy, this faith that you hold, it's not just yours, but it was passed to you from those that came before you. It was passed to you from your mother. It was passed to you from your grandmother. We don't know about Timothy's father, but we do know he had strong mother figures in his life. His grandmother passed the faith on to his mother. His mother passed the faith on to him. And we see him now rising up as a young man of God because of this faith that was passed down to him. Don't neglect the values, the truths that were passed down to you. Even if you didn't have the greatest examples in the home, you're in a church that did not start with me. You're in a legacy built, a, built, a church that was built on the foundation of, of, of legacy, on the foundation of Christ, but on the foundation of someone that said yes. Spiritual authority runs and flows through this church in, in its DNA. And so it comes from, we come from, from good stock and there's, there's good things that are passed down here. And so for this reason, I remind you, because of the, the, what you've been entrusted with, because of the gift that's been given to you, for this reason, I remind you, Timothy, fan into the flame the gift of God, which is in you by the laying on of my hands. For God has given us a spirit, not a fear, but a power of love and self-control. So God has given Timothy this gift. Paul says that, that uh, Timothy's received this gift, and we've all received gifts from the Lord. God has deposited greatness within us. God has deposited uh, gifts within us to be a blessing to the body. And the wonderful thing about it is those are gifts and things that we can hone and improve in. Paul says to Timothy, fan the flame. Fan the flame. Get better at this. Stoke this fire. Improve in this. Grow in this. Did you know that your faith can grow stronger? Amen. Amen. If you're surprised, I'm going to tell you right here, your faith can grow stronger. You can grow stronger in your faith. Did you know that you can improve and grow deeper in your relationship with God? You know, it doesn't have to stay at an introductory level for the next 10, 20, 30 years. You can grow in your relationship with God. Are you aware of the fact that you don't always have to make the same decisions, choices, and mistakes? That through that faith growing, through your relationship improving, you can grow closer to God and begin to know how to make new decisions with a renewed mind. So what does he say? He says, fan into the flame the gift of God that was given. Pray into what God gave you. This gift, this salvation, this, this blood-bought new life that we have through Jesus Christ. Pray into that. Read your word and digest what God has to say to you day after day after day. Be in community with other believers. Now, in this day, in this time, in this climate, the last, people want, last thing people want to do is go somewhere for a Bible study or do something. But there are other ways to be in community. Amen. There are other ways to stay connected and not be in a close physical proximity. Yes. The text says that God has given us a spirit, not a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Not a spirit of fear. Isaiah chapter 41 Verse 10 says, fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The beautiful thing about the text is it shows us that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. God is saying, fear not, because I'm with you. 
I'm not going to leave you. I'm your God. I will, in fact, do the opposite of leaving. I will strengthen you. I will build you up in turbulent times. I will build you up when you're feeling weak. I will be your strength in the midst of your weakness. I will be your joy in the midst of your pain. Even though your weeping will endure for a night, know that joy will come in the morning because don't be fearful because I'm with you. Don't be dismayed because I am your God. And if I am for you, who can stand against you? And if I am for you, who can stand against you? There is no weapon that can rise against you. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment shall be refuted, says the Lord God of hosts. God is with us, saints of God. He is with us to encourage us. He is with us so we cannot be afraid. That's why he says it so often in scripture. Because he knows that fear can grip us. Fear can paralyze us. But he says, I've not given you the spirit of fear. It's okay to be afraid, but don't let it dominate. It's okay to be afraid, but do not stay there. Get up from your fear and move forward. Get up from your fear and move forward. Get up from your fear and move forward. forward. We're still moving forward. We're still moving forward because our God says do not fear our God says do not fear and he's not blind to the facts he's not surprised he's like he's not like oh my gosh he's not in heaven freaking out wondering what to do he's not fearful he's calm cool calm and collected God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power but of power Joshua 1 9 have I Have I not commanded you? I said this already. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Do not be downcast. For the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. In the midst of whatever you're going through, God is with you wherever you go. Wherever you place your foot, God is there. God is with you. The rain falls on both the just and the unjust. So even though you may have been just, the rain is continuing to fall. God has not forsaken. God has not forgotten God is with you he's with you he's with you have I not commanded you be both strong and courageous rise up in power do not be frightened and do not be dismayed because God's not going to leave you anytime soon if there's any distance between you and God he didn't put it there if there's any distance between you and God he's not the one that took a step back Do not be fearful. Do not be dismayed. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And he's given you power. The text says be strong and courageous. How can we be strong in the midst of what we're going through? How can we be courageous when 2020 looks like how it does and it's only March? How can we be strong and courageous when things are out of control? Because we know who's in control. We know who has all power in his hand. And because... Because the Lord is in control, because he's in control, we know that we have power as well. God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of power. Acts 1.8 says, but you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And then you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. And in all Judea. And Samaria. And to the ends of the earth. The ends of the earth. You will receive power. You will receive power. The wonderful thing about power. Is it allows you to do things that you couldn't do without it. Power allows you to do things that you wouldn't normally do. If you didn't have it. And so what we see here in in the book of Acts. Is that power that the power that the apostles were given allows them to walk forward in boldness it allows them to be bold boldness is mentioned time and time and time and time and time again all throughout the book of acts but one of my favorite uh uh, mentionings of the the word boldness is this Acts chapter 4 verse 13 this is this is amazing Now when they saw Peter and and John are being judged before a group of individuals, and, and it says now when these individuals, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and common men, they were astonished and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. 
they recognized that they had been with Jesus. They saw their boldness. They saw their strength. They saw their zeal. They saw their vigor. They saw the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost on them. And they realized in this moment, oh, wait a minute, they've been with Jesus. How many of us, that can be our testimony. That people look at our lives, look at us, and they say, oh, they've, they've been with Jesus. You see, many of us, we want the power, but do we want the presence? We want the power, but what we fail to understand is the power comes with the presence. The power comes with the presence. The, the spirit of power comes with the presence. It comes with being in intimacy with the Father. Yes. Intimacy with the Father. Psalm 91, we just read it. We got excited. He who, what's the secret there? The secret there is it says, he who dwells in the shelter, in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust because we trust him we run to him because we trust him we abide in him because we trust him we run to the secret place where the power is restored where the power is given listen everyone's trying to stay indoors everyone's trying to be quarantined and all this other stuff use that time you see god <laughs> use that time to get get open up this word Hear what thus saith the Lord for you and your family. Hear what thus saith the Lord for you and your life and your household. Use this time wisely and responsibly. Because we're stewards of our time as well. Yeah, you got to take care of yourself. You have to get all these things done. But don't forget, God, God wants you to ultimately seek him. And, and we want the, the power and the blessings that come. But we need to have the intimacy. If you dwell in the secret place, if you dwell in the shadow, then those blessings will come. Then those, th that protection can come. We need to understand that we dwell in the secret place. Don't just go after the power. Go after the presence. Yeah. Go after the presence of God. And it's so important because the presence and power allow us to be bold. And in times like these, more than ever, it's the boldness of the church that is needed. In times like these, more than ever, it's the boldness of the church that is needed. It's the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ that is needed. It's times like these that we need not shrink back, but rise up and speak out. But rise up and be bold. Theologian A.W. Tozer says this. He says, a, a scared world needs a fearless church. A scared world needs a fearless church. And in times like these, it's time to be bold. It's time to be brave. While the world is making decisions rooted in fear and panic, let's rise up in faith, draw near to the Father, and show the world that the church of Jesus Christ cannot be stopped. We mobilize. We come together. We strategize and we execute. We pray. We read scripture. We worship and we warfare. And when, we're, when we are in isolation, we're still connected to the blood of of the land yes Lord we're still connected by the blood of the land so even if my brother is overseas my sister is overseas we're connected by the blood of Jesus Christ the blood is what keeps us connected the blood is what draws us together the blood is what keeps us strong hey thank you for the blood thank you for the blood that reaches to the highest mountains and flows to the lowest valley the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power give the lord a shout of praise in this place hallelujah lord we thank you for the blood that covers we thank you for the blood that redeems we thank you for the blood that sets free and just as moses and the israelites sprinkled the blood over their doorstep sprinkled the blood over their household right now we plead the blood of jesus over your people we plead the blood of jesus over this house we plead the blood of jesus over our families we plead the blood of jesus hallelujah the blood over our families the blood over our bodies the blood the blood the blood the blood we plead the blood of jesus over this house over this church over its people over those watching we plead the blood of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah yes lord yes lord yes lord yes lord hallelujah
thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your blood. Thank you, Lord, for your blood. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We plead the blood of Jesus that will not lose its power. No matter what's going on, the blood of Jesus will not lose. It hasn't gotten weaker since this thing went viral. It hasn't gotten weaker since this thing broke out. It hasn't gotten weaker. It's not scared of coronavirus. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus that gives me strength from this day to the next day, from yesterday to next week, from next week to next month, from next month to next year, to next year until the year after, to the year after until he returns, it will never lose. Hey, never lose its power. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so what we see here, what we see taking place is that churches all over the nation have closed their doors. Churches all over the nation have closed their doors today and they're meeting online. Now, that's not a, 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 a jab or anything. That's a beautiful thing. There is wisdom in that. There is beauty in that. That's a picture of what the church is able to do with technology in the 21st century when things hit. That's a picture to let us know that, look, even if the doors close and we can't meet, you can't stop the church. The church is going to continue to move. The bride of Christ is going to continue to meet. The bride of Christ is going to continue to mobilize. The bride of Christ is going to continue to connect. Even if it's over a screen, the gospel is being preached. Even if it's over a screen, the gospel is being proclaimed. Even if it's over a, sc a screen, you see, the internet is something that God is, is given as a tool, and it's all in how you use it. We see there are pockets of distraction and pockets of perversion and pockets of illegal things taking place on the internet, but also we see the church coming together, the bride of Christ adorned in white saying, this is how we fight our battles. We're meeting online, we're closing our doors. We're making things happen for the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God, no matter what we're up against, we're not just about talk, but we're about power. So watch online, stay connected online and do what we can do to stay connected through these turbulent times. The church will not be stopped. But I believe for us, for Bethel Gospel Tabernacle, for this house, for this church right now in this season on this day. To, make, to come to this decision wasn't one that we just went through trivially. We, we talked about this. We, as leaders, we, we prayed about this decision. We met about this and strategized and talked with the right people about this decision. So we're keeping an eye on the number of people and staying in compliance with the governor's instructions. If this is the cap, this is how you have to handle it. We're doing that. We've restructured our seating, obviously, and our giving. We've thoroughly cleaned the church uh, 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 a lot more to provide hand sanitizer and uh, altered our interactions with one another. We've informed you, we have the information, those cards to inform you if anything uh, takes place. So for us, this decision was not reached without great effort. And it's not to say that the same decision will always be made, but I think it's important to note that we're here today because there is, there is power in the press. And even though things are difficult, I, I felt it necessary for us to be wise as possible to, to, to make this thing happen. There's power in the press, even through difficulty. Uh, why are we here today? Yes, for, 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 for financial, for tithe and offering. Yeah, uh, uh, of course. Uh, our financial situation has not, it's shifting, but it has not fully shifted. We still need a, a, a continuous move of God on that front. And, and for those who are familiar with the moving forward theme and what we're up against financially, our obligations don't stop because of where we're at. We still have obligations to meet. So thank you for those online as well for continuously uh, sowing into the ministry. And, but the, the real reason is I, I believe that the church, it's important for the church as a beacon to come together and work through worship and prayer to show the world and to show ourselves that in this time, in this season, that God matters when, th when times are great, when times are wonderful, but also through times of difficulty. I was just talking in, in the office and I, uh, we were talking very quickly when 9-11 when took place, you couldn't find room in a church. 
because it was a different type of, of, of tragedy, tragedy and it was one that called for everyone to come together. Now the churches, the doors are closing and we have to think of strategic ways to keep people engaged and keep people fed into the gospel and what God is doing in the church and for the kingdom. But for us, we, we wanted to use precaution in this meeting time. That's why there's so many things that are different. And differences sometimes cause, <laughs> cause for a little bit of friction. But I think it's important for us to note that we took these precautions because of our love for you. Because of our love for you. This is why we did what we did and made the shifts that we made. Uh, uh, because we still wanted to gather together, but also be safe in doing what we did. So God has given us the spirit safe and wise in what we did. So God has given us the spirit, not of fear, but of power and of love, of love, of love. John 13, 34, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. It's time for the church to love one another. It's time for us to be an encouragement to one another. It's time for us to pick up the phone and check in on one another and show the world worldwide that we can love him through our love for one another. By this we know, love, that he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or in talk, but in deed and in truth. And it's a time and a season in history, a time and a season in the church, where we have to get real strategic about how we show love when it's very difficult to make true contact with someone. But we have to be prayerful about it. We can't let this situation stop us from showing love, stop us from being salt, stop us from being light, stop us from spreading the truth of the gospel. It is time now more than ever for the church to get active. It is time now more than ever for the church to be active in love and demonstrate the love of love, through the love of Christ through these difficult times. So God gives us not the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and lastly, self-control, the sound mind. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. You keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord our God is an everlasting rock. He's not a rock that's going to crumble after a while. He's the rock that you can stand on, the rock that you can run to, the rock that you can lean on, the rock that you can depend on, because he is our God and he is good. And if we keep our minds stayed on him, he's going to keep us in perfect peace. Yeah. Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God. I'll start from verse 6. Uh, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. God's peace is one that guards us. Paul writes in Philippians chapter 4, not that I, now that I, am spe not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever... Whatever situation I'm in to be content, I know how to be brought low, I know how to abound. In every and any circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger and abundance and need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Don't live in fear. Don't live in fear. Live in peace. Live with a sound mind. That is why Jesus was able to sleep through a storm. Because he had peace. And when he got up and they asked him to, to, to calm the storm, what was the first words out of his mouth? Peace. Be still. Jesus had peace. It doesn't mean for us as believers that we sleep at the wheel through these turbulent times. But it does mean that we trust in Christ enough to not panic. So as I close, don't fear, church. Don't fear. Fear not, church. Don't stay in fear. Don't dwell in fear. Being afraid and living in fear and dwelling in fear are completely different things. Yeah. Don't let fear dominate. Don't let fear rule. Do not fear, church of God. We are the bride of Christ. Amen. We are the bride of Christ. And just yesterday, my wife and I celebrated five years of marriage. Five years, right? 
So congrats to me and Stephanie. Stephanie, I love you. Um, five years of marriage, and that's, you know, pretty early on. Um, but the amazing thing is realizing that we as the church are the bride of Christ. And God will not forsake his wife. He laid down his life so the church, his bride, could be lifted up. And in these end times, we need to know that, yes, our world is going through it. Yes, we're facing some unforeseen difficulties. Yes, this is something that we as a community, as a state, and as a nation, and as a world would not want to deal with. But our God is more than able to make a way in the wilderness. Our God is more than able to make a river in the desert. Our God is more than able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Nothing is wasted. Nothing is wasted. He's telling us as his creation to get our minds right he's telling us as a people to get our hearts right he's telling a world our world to cleanse our hands we sinners and purify your hearts you double-minded he's telling us as a church as the church as his church and now is not the time for fear now is the time for faith now is not the time for panic. Now is the time for faith. Now is not the time for sorrow. Now is the time for faith. Now is the time for the people of God to rise up and be the church so that God can be glorified as we continue to move forward in faith. Let's give the Lord some praise. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. God is telling us as a people that yes, in fact, there is something. There is an enemy that you can't see. Something you can't see with the naked eye that can have drastic effects on your life if it's not dealt with. I'm not just talking about COVID-19 or coronavirus. I'm talking about sin and its destructive effects talking about the prince of the air the enemy and his destructive effects to try to kill steal and destroy i'm talking about those things that we need to repent from so if you're here you know you've been living a lifestyle contrary to the one that jesus has called us to live as sons and daughters you know that you don't know Jesus Christ, you don't have a relationship with him, you have not asked for forgiveness from your sins. If you're here and you want Jesus Christ to come into your life, to make you new, to make you whole, to make you cleansed, to free you. If that's you, if you're here, you don't know Jesus, I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand nice and high. If that's you, just to be honest, you're not coming to me, you're not coming to the church, you're coming to Jesus. Is there anyone here today that does not know Jesus but wants to come to know him? I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Anyone here? All right. Perhaps you're here and you were once walking with Jesus, but over time you decided to do your own thing and you want to come back to the Father today. Is there anyone here today? All right. If you're here, you're unsure of where you would go, if you were to be called from here into eternity, or if God were to crack the sky at any moment and come back and you're unsure of where you would go, where you would be, would you be with Jesus or eternally separated from him? And you want that blessed assurance. If that's you, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Is there anyone here today? that does not know Jesus or is not sure of where they would go if the Lord were to come back. All right, dear God, I thank you so much for your people. I thank you for your church. I thank you for your house. I thank you for this message. I thank you for believers that have come out to church today, but also those that are watching. I pray that you would bless us, Father, as we seek your face, as we've pressed our way, as we've logged on, as we've done the things that show that we're seeking you i pray that you would bless us bless our house protect us father from the enemy protect us lord from the pestilence keep us covered from the crown of our heads lord to the sole of our feet jesus bless us lord bless our families keep us in the palm of your hand father i pray for your people the church to rise up i pray for your people the church to use wisdom i pray for your people the church to be the church to be the bride and to do what you've called us to do. I pray for our nation. I pray for our world. I pray, Lord, that you would give those in authority the wisdom to make the right decisions, to do what needs to be done, to not care about the dollar, but to care about the lives. 
and to do what's got to be done so that so that we can move forward and, and ultimately be a world that, that turns to you and gives you glory. I pray, God, for the creation that's groaning, for your creation that's crying out. I pray, Lord, that you and your sovereignty, that you and your wisdom, Lord, would do what only you can do. Heal broken hearts. Protect us. Keep us. We thank you. We praise you. We give you glory. We love you, Lord. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Thank you so much.